I cried about what was happening to the country. Desecration. But I have a plan for revenge. Thank you, gentlemen, first and foremost, for sparing us the time at Cinema Calls. Really do appreciate it. Um, Congratulations as well on the movie. Um, I, I saw it uh, a couple of days ago and uh, I thought it was absolutely excellent. Um, the first question I have is uh, uh, for you, Tony. Um, Ted Kay's not your, your typical uh, biopic um, of, of a criminal. Um, we're spending a lot of time with, with Ted um, on his own, and, and obviously a lot of it's in, in his mind. And I found that, for me personally, it played out with a very dreamlike um, quality. Um, it was almost, I think, poetic at times. Was that something that you'd had in mind uh, from the, the very beginning? Um, or were you, uh, at that point, looking at a more orthodox uh, type of picture? No, from the beginning, definitely was excited by doing sort of, a, you know, alternative period piece, for lack of a better word, you know, just wanted to, you know, biopics are, you know, uh, I mean, I'm calling period, but also, you know, it, uh, anyway, biopics are usually so sterile, you know, and it's just an informational overload. Um, so wanted to get away from that and just wanted to make it experiential. So you're just with the subject, with Ted K, the entire time, and that there would be kind of a power through that of you know of, of you know a, a higher level of understanding of who this person was than just giving you facts, you know. So that was from the very beginning, uh, you know, the approach. Um, and you know, and yes, it is it is poetic, but it's also wanted to you know have it also be a bit schizophrenic too. So the you know rhythm changes you know from are really important with the film. You know, obviously you rely on the music, so you can just kind of escape and process stuff. Sometimes stylizing the violence, so you're hyper aware of the violence in his actions and having a you know a moment where you're removed, or sometimes you're very immersed. So you know, just kind of wanted to use a variety of techniques, you know, especially because you're with one person, you know, so it is this one man action film and you're relying on just this one person and also, you know, amazing actor to tell the story. So just, you know, using the subjectivity to our advantage and using subjectivity for clarity and actually be more objective than your usual, you know, biopic. People say violence and the taking of human life is not a way to resolve problems, it can't work. History shows that it very often does work. Obviously, Ted um, Kaczynski is a very complex a character. Um, my next question is therefore directed to Charlotte. How did you prepare for the role of, of Ted? I guess there would have been a lot of intensive kind of uh, reading up. I don't know if you read the, his manifesto. Um, and I know there's a lot of audio and video available online. Um, one of the other things I was interested to know is that um, I understand that you shot um, the film on the exact location where he lived and, and used obviously the original sort of concrete foundation for the shack that he had. Did um, shooting in that environment, did you get any sort of um, sense of history um, from, from being there and, and being surrounded by the things that brought him peace did that bring you closer to um his uh, sort of way of thinking um you know du during that time right. um yeah well preparation was the two biggest thing was reading the manifesto which completely changed my view of who he was i knew very little about him because i was growing up in south africa at the time that he was terrorizing the u.s um, and I got really interested. I didn't actually want to play the role, be in the movie until I read the manifesto and went, okay, this is a very smart human being. Like the, the, what was then, and then I started doing press research and I was thinking what I was seeing in the press about him seemed to not quite correspond to what I was reading, uh, on the manifesto. And the next probably biggest thing was just listening to him speak. There's, 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 there's actually not a lot of video. There's like no video footage of the actual Ted available speaking. There's audio of him speaking in one interview from prison. And the second I heard him speak, 
I thought, again, this is completely different. His accent, his cadence, his energy, his enthusiasm for what he's talking about is completely different from what I picture as the standard Hollywood version of the serial killer. Or then when I went to watch other depictions that had been done of him, I was like, but nobody's doing this. Nobody's making him sound the way that he sounds. Nobody's reflecting the level of intensity that this guy actually has. Hmm. And so that was an important way in was this is an intense guy so if he's quiet he's quietly intense he's not going to speak at all but when he does if he if he does want to talk he's going to really let you know what he has to say about a thing but that's going to happen really you know in, in how he was living um and then the, the the yeah thousands of pages of diary where he was incredibly honest about what was going on in his deepest thinking and and incredibly self-aware his level of loneliness his desperation for a female partner to the point of like masturbating and thinking of himself as a woman just so that he could have female just the perception of female energy around him like the desperation of that um so there was so much to draw on and then being physically in the space was incredibly helpful um because you can see what it is to be living like that once you and, and you realize how beautiful it is to be back living in nature how amazing mm-hmm. it is to be quiet. And we'd be out shooting very small teams. So it'd be very quiet in the snow or something. And then you hear a plane come over and you're like, well, that is, kind of, that is sort of annoying. <laughs> I, kind of, <laughs> I kind of see how if I was just trying to mind my own business here and, and was hearing that noise, it might start to get to me, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I thought you conveyed all of that um, uh, very well in your, in your performance, um, which I personally think is is a career best from you i don't know if you you kind of analyze your own work that closely i know some actors don't like to kind of look back on themselves but um i I thought you were um, phenomenal um and as you say you gave that example of the the kind of planes going overhead and um that kind of reaction that you had uh was very kind of primal the kind of rage that you were able to, to to sort of convey um when when that came over it really really could it did drive the point home because one of the things i wasn't aware of um until i read some of the, the press notes is that he was this kind of um eco-terrorist as well yes. with yes. sabotaging sort of uh, you know skidoos and uh, uh, all this other sort of uh, equipment um he, he was um obviously in the it's it's not a great thing but he was kind of ahead of his time in what he was trying to do and he was a a, 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 a voice in the wilderness uh, and I guess he must have felt very lost and again you were able to convey that um, very well um, on that sort of point of being in the wilderness a question for for both of you um, just to lighten it slightly what sort of facet of modern life would drive either of you two to kind of live a solitary existence, you know, in a cabin in the woods? What, what, what is it that you would just just need to get away from to, to, to sort of do that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, to be honest, I, the both of us, I mean, Tony will speak for himself, but I, I, I'd like to go to the woods, you know, uh, whenever I can. <laughs> it's kind of <laughs> like, I guess, I guess it's kind of like just modern life in general. Like it's just reached the point. I mean, we have a higher suicide rate than murder rates by a significant margin or, you know, it's, it's the stress of modern life. There's not one factor. It's just, we really are living lives that, that for most people are not making them particularly happy, man. You know, I, I go to the woods as often as I can, or I go to the river, or I go to the beach, go to nature. Okay. Yeah. Well, what I about mean- you, Tony? I mean, I actually do spend a lot of time off the grid in Vermont. Um, and that's sort of why I was interested in, in this character too. Was, um, so for me, I mean, right now it's trying to unplug as much as possible. I mean, as soon as you yeah. go into the wilderness, cut the cord, you know, where I am, there's no running water, electricity. And, uh, and you know, it just puts things in perspective, you know, and just that power. And uh, I think just with, you know, the climate cliff that we're about to, you know, go off of and, you know, just the technological overload. I mean, that's where the story, you know, that we started working on 10 years ago is far more relatable than, yeah. you know, than it's ever been, you know? And I think that's why sort of like the delays and sort of the, you know, very happy that we're, the film is coming out at this moment because it just, uh, it seems more right than ever. <laughs> you know? 
Well, gentlemen, thank you very much. We're almost at time, so I, I won't go on to the next question because we're not going to be able to squeeze it in. But um, very best of luck um, with the opening on the film, which I believe is the the, the 18th. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to speak to you again um, in the future about uh, your next projects. Definitely. Thank you. Amazing. Thank Ashley. you, Ashley. Thanks for the for thank your you time, both. man. Okay. No, and likewise. Take care. My motive? I want to change the world. <laughs>